hi guys i hope you good i hope you feeling blessed uh your sister is feeling super good and blessed as you can see today i'm wearing the dugu with the pink lipstick it means i want to talk to somebody today um thank you so much guys um for being here uh, I think we've got this monetization thing. Uh, please uh, watch them ads, okay? Finish them. Eh? You, you are supporting this channel now. You are part of the family. Eh? And in this family, yes, you know how it works. Yeah, uh, thank God for Brother Ricky again. <laughs> Brother Ricky. Uh, shh. This is my God, the way he loves me, he has to make sure that he gets me that particular brother that will walk with me through this thing. And yes, Brother Ricky is the one that is helping me with regard to um, monetization and everything. So he was helping me through the process and I got, uh, I think I managed to get it right. I'll still have to update him and show him what I've done and what I've not done. Um, why did I uh, monetize Bazalwani? this video rising this uh filming thing it's getting complicated by day and i think i think solemnly for this reason that i think that the channel has to work for itself in order to get let's say all the uh, equipment that it needs um for me to start having good quality um uh, videos and all that yes because i need to buy either a laptop camera and all that is needed for that bazalani yes 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 we we need to do that i think moreover if the channel can make money um it's a good thing because there are a lot of people trust me that will need our help uh let me just leave it at that um I want to address a short thing for a very short, short, short reason in this uh, video. Huh? Dress code. Um, I had a video on, but I was so brutal. So brutal. I'm telling you, when I said the Holy Spirit rebuked me, it's because of how I, 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 I that video. You see, um, Everybody has the Holy Spirit in them. You know, it's, it's, you don't uh, receive the Holy Spirit and I receive Jesus as Lord and Jesus leaves you as an orphan. Jesus is clear. He says, I do not leave you as orphans. You know, the helper, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead is with us. So, you don't come here and think that you're the only one with the Holy Spirit. You don't come here and think you're the only one filled with the Spirit simply because you feel that my my sleeves sleeveless dress is 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 offending you. If you have a conviction of clothes, so be it. Uh, do it your way and wait for me to be content of whatever you think. Is not godly to be convicted of it and another thing is I've walked with so many people with, uh, with that that were talking about dress code you know like there was a time in my life where I was with people that wanted me to wear a headscarf long dresses cover everywhere in order for me to show that I'm a child of God and I have the Holy Spirit. Go read First Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 and understand why God doesn't want out appearance. Second, you quoted something from, uh, I think, Corinthians chapter 12. Yes. When Paul addresses spiritual gifts, Paul is talking about the body of Christ, you know, and the least parts of this body. Please go and understand the background of that, that letter and how it applies to us today as a child of God, Bible scholar. Okay. 
do not be a Bible scholar without the, 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 the Holy Spirit in you. You see, and how you say things to people tells me about you. Yes, you may, you, you may be well dressed according to you outside, but your heart may be dressed with wickedness and cruelty and selfish motives. Um, I have wide curves. Let me tell you, I have curves, you know, and my curves cannot be hidden. Like you, I can try to dress up like that woman and, you know, my curves will always be popping out, even though I don't want them to pop out so much that there were time I, I, I just wanted to slim because people, when I wear, like I will wear a long pencil skirt, but uh, with a shirt, my curves will be popping out. You, you understand? So you don't come here and make me feel uncomfortable in my clothes and think and call me uh, worldly simply because when you feel convicted with regards to clothing. You understand? If I don't feel guilty about it, there is nothing to feel guilty about. That's how the Holy Spirit works. He will convict you. You know, he will speak to you, you personally as a person. You'll feel guilty of doing something that you don't want. And moreover, we are still in this world. I am not of this world, but I'm still in this world. And the Holy Spirit is continuously working in us. Sanctification is a process where the Holy Spirit works in us to bring out the image of Christ. So if you are convicted with regards to dress code, please, please, don't make another person feel like their world is simply because when you are wearing long skirts and long jerseys and whatever and whatever. No. And the book of Timothy that you also quoted, Paul did not say, do not adorn. He said, do it, adorn yourselves in modesty. It means whatever you do, do it in moderation. Whatever you do, do it respectfully. Whatever you do, do it, doing it, do it knowing that you are submitting to your husband. You are submitting to God. He did not say, don't adorn yourself. No, he said, adorn yourself, but don't overdo it. Don't look at the out beauty more than looking in the inner beauty. If you remember, I had put on um, pictures of Aus Kony, Connie Ferguson. If you look at Aus Connie Ferguson, she's a celebrity. She's been one for decades, right? If you look at her pages, you are going to see a bit of her showing flesh there, showing flesh there. What tells you that that woman is not a child of God? Simply because she's wearing a short and a, a strapless top, crop top, dancing for her husband, the blue top and the black shirt. And there's a time where her husband took her for a vacation. They went out on a vacation and she there's where she's wearing a nice swimsuit and a, a throw on top and... um. Her skin was showing. There's plenty of pictures uh, because she has a fitness center where uh, she she wears um, uh, tights. Her pictures. There are plenty of of, of, of uh, pictures where she ha she's wearing a gown, uh, um, like let's say. A, you know, a, a gown, a ball gown, or any gown for that matter, that shows skin behind. Can we stand here and say she's not godly? Can we stand here and say Auskoni is not filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, that is a woman chosen by God in an industry full of so many evils. A woman, God is working through her to direct people back to God and His Word. I'll give you a very good example. Aus Kony lost her husband. May God continue to comfort her. Aus Kony took back people to what people don't, don't pay attention to. When people thought that she would go down, you know, with, with probably pain, depression and all that, she focused on the word of God. She publicly showed people, this is how I'm going to mourn. This is where I take my pain. The word of God. She began to show people. Do you know how many women she is strengthening? Do you know how many widows 
look up to her and gain strength. I'm going to talk about this young lady called, um, remember I told you I'm not a TV person, but there's this young lady, believe you me, that young lady I did not know before. I saw this young lady on, on, on YouTube, then I went to, 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 um, to Instagram, and then I started looking at the pictures, and I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this girl doesn't dress, but she has so much confidence, and this girl is so bubbly, and this girl is so loving, that's, that's who she, she is, and that's what she is portraying, you see, then, as I was there, you know, because I was, uh, honestly, I was a liberal person. I, I had so many things with regards to dress code, you know. That is one of the things that kept me, kept, like, captivity. That, and I was like, oh my God, this girl is not dressed up. Oh my God, this girl, no. She's so big, because I'm big, you know. Um, and she's so big, and I'm like, oh, she's so big, but she's not dressing. Her name is Thick Leonce. Then I came to a YouTube channel. Then something in me was like, how many people do you think she helped? People probably wanted to commit suicide because of body shaming, because of feeling uncomfortable in their own bodies. How many people do you think that girl has also helped to encourage and motivate to stay strong? Something interesting happened as I was looking at, uh, watching her videos on YouTube. I came across a vlog she had. I think she was in, she went to a baby shower of a cash flow's wife. Yeah. And when she was in that baby shower, she was the MC. And she was wearing a skimpy dress, you know, bubbly as usual, happy and friendly as usual. But something she did, this half naked person, if you'd like to put it that way. The MC, the so-called, the, the worldly MC. Let me tell you what the worldly MC did. This young lady, before she could go far, she called someone for prayer. She, you know, she stepped down and realized that she needs in order for her to take care of the service, hmm? the ceremony, there needs to be one in charge. She called Osconi Ferguson to come and pray so that they can start with prayer. That on its own tells me something about the MC herself. We may not see her relationship with God outside. But do we understand her relationship with God inside? Where she's coming from? The possibilities of her knowing and have walking with God behind scenes are there. This Connie Ferguson, seemingly people don't know her only for acting. There's something more about Connie Ferguson that people don't know. This Jesus in Connie is coming out. And this is a woman. If you, you go and listen to her story, her husband specifically was a man of God. A man that the industry didn't want to give a chance. But the man had Jesus in him. You see, and this Jesus, he kept on holding to him. Where? An industry where people sell their souls to the devil. Abut Shona held his wife with Christ as the center. And that wife is showing us exactly what the head of the house was teaching her. Can we stand here and say, God is not going to use or work through Connie? Because sometimes she's going to wear a skimpy thing. Do you know how many people God is using in the limelight? Boaz Gale. People who are in an industry that people would rather hold and sell their souls to the devil 
than uh, preach this Jesus. There are a lot of pastors in, in the industry that you will not even see that they are pastors because you see them wearing these uh, things because that's their work, right? Now, I'm in a place where, you know, I want us to look at the backgrounds as well. The same way, Deuteronomy chapter 22, which you mentioned, um, entitles that a man should not wear what belongs to a woman and a woman should not wear. What was Moses addressing? What was Paul addressing in Corinthians? What was uh, Paul talking about in Timothy? Yes, it applies even to us today. But what was the core reason behind that letter? Do we just throw scriptures anyhow? Because we feel that our eyes are telling us that no, this is not godly. Let's leave it at that. We we'll respect your conviction. Allow, allow us and respect our convictions. Okay. Now, Amatswana by tribe. Okay, I don't believe I don't belong to this earthly tribes anymore because I'm a citizen of heaven. But Amatswana, you see, and in Tswana, we wear Lisaidi. And in Tswana, we wear these skin uh, skins, animal skins, you know, skin, you see them dancing with it. And there's a Zulu who wears what they wear. There's a Sotu who wears what they wear. And I've traveled to Mozambique, all these countries, Malawi, Zim, you name it, women from Zambia. I've met them. Their culture, them, their tribes, they wear uh, cloth. They, it's called the cheek dangers, right? Now, a woman growing up with that uh, that you, you you know you grow up covering yourself with this cloth and a woman who was born in uh, west of Joburg and my dress coat and has to her what's what is abominable to me is not God created us like this and we embrace different tribes different cultures and different races now God is God of a white man and God of a white woman, God of an Indian, God of, uh, of colored. A colored person, an Indian person, a white person will wear their short when it's hot and a vest and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Why should you come here and tell me that my God is in my dress code? Am I walking naked? Will my will the Holy Spirit allow me to walk naked? Will the Holy Spirit at the same time make me feel guilty about something that that is not wrong? Why is it wrong? Because you perceiving is wrong. But the Holy Spirit in me, whom I believe in, has not convicted me of that. Deuteronomy 22, today is 2022. Can you walk inside Woolworths and go to the female department when you are a male? Can you wear something you, can you wear this dress that I'm wearing now as a man? Deuteronomy 22. We have women who are working in male de departments, male industries. We have women working as architects and they wear overalls, things that you would say they are made for men. Where's Deuteronomy 22 then? Let the Holy Spirit convict you of something. And if you walk knowing that, you know, I respect your view and I respect your rebuke. I respect everything about you. But never ever come here and call me worldly. Because when you feel that I'm worldly. I come here telling my story. 
not to say I am perfect now. I bo, I bo. I'm still in the world and the Holy Spirit is still working in me. I don't know tomorrow. I pray to remain steadfast. I pray to remain in this uh, this faith. I pray to continuously uh, uh, please my God. Paul says by the transformation of the the mind. You know, I pray for this uh, mind transformation. I pray to remain in 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 truth, and I pray that that um, I give my body as a living sacrifice to God. And and I'm not saying uh, no tomorrow. I, I no, maybe yesterday I, I I two days ago I killed someone and then this morning I repented. The Holy Spirit is continuously working in us. I come from a kingdom of darkness. You can't tell me about weave. I know the tactics of the devil. He uses money. He uses tongue. He uses eyes. He uses. TV, he uses literally everything. He uses weave. But do I do you know who you are? Do I've disconnected myself and you know, unlike other people, I would get something and pray over something because behind that you don't know what came to for that thing to be. But now can I stop living? Because I, I'm scared of the devil. I'm scared that, oh my God, I can't wear these earrings because uh, I bo, I bo, I bo. I'm not giving a spirit of fear, man. I bo. If I come here and tell you all that he uses in order to get to people's homes, to, and then these fears, we must entertain them. But yet we have the power of God in us. The living word of God in us. I'm not going to talk more about this dress code thing. There was a time I wished I was slimmer because I felt my calves were popping in the wrong places like I'm in the dress. You know, I was liberal. I was brutal with this thing of dressing because you end up focusing on dress code, out, out appearance and forget your evil heart, your wicked heart, your, your, your heart full of self-righteousness. God says, I do not look at our appearance. That doesn't mean come to God naked. That doesn't mean come to God looking like a prostitute. That doesn't mean come to God unrespectfully so. That doesn't mean dishonor your husband and God and, and walk anyhow you want. Yes, I can do everything I want, but uh, not all if, not if, not all is beneficial for me, scripture says. And that is because the Holy Spirit is working to teach me that this and that is not right. This is right. I cannot wear my legging and track top and walk to the gym because people will see my calves are popped out. I should wear suit. I should not go to the to the to the beach with with swimming suit because I'm a Christian. Ay, boo. God put that beach there for a reason for me to cool my body if it's hot. He was so wise. Ay, boo. Ay, eh. Don't do that. You scare people. Even a prostitute that you see in the street will be so scared to come in. You see, show love. Rebuke with love. Everything that you say. And because in that comment, someone said, um, stop your sermons. Number one, I'm not preaching. I've not started with Bible studies. I'm here telling my story. The day I start with Bible studies, because my, 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 my channel is walking its pace according to direction. So the day I start, let me inform you, because I can sense you, uh, you probably... Um, a Bible scholar, right? Re Reformed theologian, right? <laughs> okay, let me help you. Um, a, a, a sermon takes about a week, takes about 10 hours of preparation for someone to come and preach. We just don't take the Bible and preach. No, we prepare for a sermon. 
You see, and as you were quoting verses, why didn't you also quote, because you were talking about my sermon, why didn't you quote Paul when he says women shouldn't preach? Because you use that scripture in order to come tell me that I'm, I'm worldly. Anyway, you're going to waste my energy, waste my time, waste, uh, you see, the, the goodness intended for this channel. And brother, don't do that. It's not right. I gave you email in order for you to correct me. All right. I stand to be corrected. But one thing I cannot do is let you become the Holy Spirit in me. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> Try next door. Okay, Abby? Yes. We cannot, we cannot, you cannot make women feel like women in God must look ugly. Yeah? They must look ugly. Because they don't want to look like the world. They, they, they shouldn't be beautiful. Braids. Should I also make you understand what Paul says about braids? Do you know what's braid? Do you know braid? The word itself braids. So women should stop making uh, twists and all that. Those are braids. Women who get married, I do, I do, should not wear gold. Because that's what the scripture says. You should not put all these. That's, it's a gold ring. Please. Let's not go there. When the spirit is in you, the spirit directs you. Your everyday life. Okay, I cannot wear my shirt. There are a lot. I mean, I'm coming from the world. I'm coming from darkness. I even fell as a Christian. I have a lot of my pictures out there. I was chatting with my my multiple boyfriends, others demanding pictures. They are all over there. My probably half naked, naked pictures. You name it, they are all there. Can those pictures determine me and validate my 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 my, my salvation? And I, because I did it yesterday, I've not changed today. How do you know that? Do you know how many Christians are being blackmailed because their they are, they are half-naked pictures are out there? They are even afraid to say, God, say, I've repented yesterday, my picture is out there. Do you know how many people are being blackmailed? All because they'll be scared. To say, hey, hey, oh, yes, they were in the world. Yes, they probably fell, but they stood up. They stood up. The Holy Spirit is convicting them. Is why working in them. Don't do that anymore. Yes, I was wearing a short. There are pictures of me wearing shorts, wearing whatever. I was there at the time, the time. I fell. I didn't allow the spirit to work in me. The flesh was in was all over me. The, the flesh was in control. It's a journey. It's a journey. We are being molded every day. It's a journey it's a journey today I, I i may feel weeks weeks people wear weeks for different reasons in christianity there are people who suffer from alopecia there are people who have problems with the hair and eyelids, and they feel comfortable in the weave hey. No, no, no. We shouldn't treat people like that. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't think we're the only ones filled with the Holy Spirit. Aibo, where are you coming from so that we can go also? So that we, we collect what you've collected. Aibo. God works in us. I'm not here telling my story to say I'm perfect. Aibo. Aibo. Who knows? Maybe I have a boyfriend. Maybe I'm, 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 yes, I'm convicted to speak of fornication. Maybe my flesh is still in control. We don't know. We are still saying, God, work in us. God, Father, help me to repent. Father, God, help me. Paul says, who can help us from this body of death? Thank God for Jesus. Jesus and his spirit is working in us. Every day. You probably are a person convicted of dress code. But you are a person who gossips. You are a person with a hot tongue.
tongue. You are a person with an evil heart. You murder people with your heart. It's not our appearance that we need to focus on. The Holy Spirit is working in us. Daily, we need to come before God. Work on me. Lord, yesterday my anger was in control. Work in me. Yesterday I spoke ill of that sister, of that man. God, work in us. We are in, hey. Anyway. Why did I stop watching TV? <laughs> I stopped watching TV in 2016, November. Started counting it well from 2017, but I stopped watching TV in 2016, November. With everything that I've got two reasons. Why? Okay, one reason is other reason is very simple. The other reason, number one reason, was to dedicate my time to my Bible, right? To, to, to have time. The major reason why I stopped watching TV, I had activated my third eye. I, 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 ha I have spiritual, dark kingdom, spiritual enlightenment. So I see when a demon is behind things. Let me make an example. It was this particular year. There was Mamlambo on almost all soapies. Mamlambo this, Mamlambo that, Mamlambo. It was Mamlambo a name of a person. Mamlambo the Mamlambo that was uh, doing something with the CD in generation. And there was, um, there was Mamlambo everywhere. I think Mamlambo was in three different. Uh, there was Mamlambo called a person. Oh, Mama. There was one Mama called Mamlambo. There was that Mamlambo the snake. There was Mamlambo in another one. Just remember those episodes. And <laughs> I'm not saying anybody is evil or. I'm not saying that. But there was that Mamlambo. I'm giving reasons why I stopped watching TV. You see, when you serve an idol, <laughs> when you serve a demon, when you serve anything of that world, there is a time where it comes and says, give me honor and glory. You have to publicly, if it's hidden, that is why you hear they say every after six months, you have to make a ceremony for it. Every after 12 months, you have to make this publicly honor and, and give glory to this thing that is giving you what you have. So that particular year, picking up mom lamba this, mom lamba that, I was like, no, this is wrong. And then I looked at the TV. There's a lot of problems that will surface in people's life, in the dramas and the soapies and the alice. The only solution is a traditional healer. Yes, there's one particular soapy where they added church. I don't think there was a sermon in that church that is concrete, close to the word of God. Instead, what is happening there or what was happening there? It was just to put the church there, but not demonstrated well. Why did I stop watching TV? You honor God with everything about you, you know, and my eyes being part of that. I'll give again another example. I hope you, you get it. Program, there are programs that are there that you you would swear 
This is not coming from a person that knows God. Programs that promote all the ills and evil. Behind all that, there are people that serve different kingdoms. There are good people on TV sets. There are people that are out there to educate people. You know, television television has different different programs, and others are educative. Others, you know. That's why even televangelists, uh, whatever you call them, the evangelists of the TV, they are there. You see, all different kinds, but there are certain things that you need to watch and be careful that, no, this one, I do, my, my, my kids even knows that there are certain programs. My kids would watch TV, you know, and I'm in my bedroom. If I come down and I hear, I'll tell them, change the program. I'm not talking about babies. I'm talking about a 19-year-old who knows that I do not watch that. Manipulation on TV. You see, so many things that are raw and mean. Having it, I, you know, I, I, I wish I can show you, but unfortunately for my uh, phone you can't see clearly with this eye I know behind it there's a demon if you somebody even asked if you look at there's a certain um, storyline that uh, uh, the late Shauna uh, did don't even bring him and his wife and family to that Rather ask, what did he observe in the TV industry for him to bring out that? Uh, Joburg Kings, Kings of Joburg, something like that. What is it that Mr. Shona observed? You see, we are talking about a child of God who came to TV and people thought he didn't have talent and God raised him, right? Yes. Now, what is it? That he observed as a child of God who publicly professed Jesus. You see? What is it that he observed that he made a production like that? Mam Lambo this, Mam Lambo that, Mam Lambo this. Then, kings of Joburg. What is it that Abu Shona might have observed? That people cannot tell you about. I don't know if you remember. I think I stopped watching TV when all the generation cast was fired. Integrity lost. Why? I'm not applying anything. I'm just telling my reasons why I stopped watching TV. Uh, Babu Mvodla is a, is a big guy. He's been in this industry for long. He has held a lot of people. He has taught a lot of people. But I'm just saying, I stopped watching TV, say, particularly around those areas. What do we promote? You see? Why do we promote such? Okay. Sometimes it's for lessons, for people to learn of things that are happening. What is it that Shauna Ferguson might have observed? By writing Kings of Joburg. Another thing I wanted to show you more. There's this um, holiday in South Africa that I don't like and will never like. You see. South Africa is like sometimes we tend to make people idols in a very scary way. There's this particular old man who did us so much favor around the apartheid eras and whatever, whatever. 
Was he the only one who did it? Even Jesus, our Jesus. You know, we there's majority rules, man. Christians are a lot in South Africa. But we cannot even make him, you know, like this particular holiday. Hi, bo. Honor and glory. So there are just a lot of things that made me stop watching TV. Especially now. There's this, there's this, I think it's Mojala. No. There are just many things. <laughs> Even the show mats now, they're all over. Like things that you see that no, this is not gonna teach my child a godly lifestyle. You see, this is not going to teach. There are beautiful people, I'm telling you, with educative uh, programs. But there are these programs that they are evil. And the hand behind it, the person cannot, you want and say about this person. The person who did this, who wrote this, or who thought of this, does this person have God? Yes, Corner, uh, Oscorny has a certain... Uh, thing, what was he thinking in order for him to bring out that? Now we are talking about someone that proclaims Jesus as Lord. Hmm? What is it that he observed that made him come out, come out with that? You understand? TV is not a bad thing, guys. You can watch TV, family. But you must choose what your, you set your eyes on. Because there are diabolic things there. You know, there are diabolic things. There's this one particular celebrity in South Africa that, hey, people love this person. You can see Gutaika. That's is you can see it you don't even need to to you don't even need uh, to be a prophet you don't need to enlighten your eyes you don't you can see Jegutai <laughs> this one uh -uh, destruction and turmoil sorry I didn't watch TV I stopped my TV was actually YouTube um like I told you that I would tell you some of the people that God used for me to come back out here and share this. I started watching Ricky a long time ago. Uh, he was part of me as TV, but if I wanted to watch TV, I was watching a channel of a lady called Owami. You see, God used her. She would sit with her glasses, sip it, laugh bubbly and all that joy. And she was my TV. <laughs> You see, God used the one that made even me have that oomph and do it um, because I was being directed by the Spirit. But hey, sh Mina, I'm a very stubborn person. I'm like, no, sorry, God. Mina, I don't want, don't get me involved with these things. You see, I'm not telling. I'm not. And, you know, other people be judging. And there's this person that I watched called uh, Sims Right. Hey, sh She's my other TV. <laughs> then I came. God used uh, uh, Ricky. God used Owami. God used uh, um, Sims Wright. And a lady in the UK called Yime. You know? Yime is even worse. We even spoke. Yime is one person that encouraged me a lot that start okay she was talking with regards to work and everything and everything but me that there was this thing in me that i need to do this you see but i did me nam john let me let me just tell you people everything that the holy spirit would minister for me to do i would be so stubborn i'm like mm -mm. Like God, remember I told you I want nothing to do with you and your people, but it will be a burden in your heart. 
So God uses everything and everybody. What seems to be foolish in the sight of men is what God uses. You see, God is going to use, a fail to use you, dressed up and all that, in the heart to change souls, you know, uh, to bring souls to Christ. Because when you think you are self-righteous and you forgot that we are righteous on the basis of what Jesus did for us, the imputed righteousness of Jesus on us. And God will be using someone that you look at and say, oh, she's in the world. People will be coming to Jesus. So, Mina, <laughs> my kids still watch TV, okay? And a lot of people around me watch TV. But Mina, I stopped. Okay, I'm trying to go back with, I mean, I'm in charge of the remote control. So, I just told myself that, ah, anything that is not good, I'll just skip it. Like, there are television programs that you want to go to. Why would people accept that? And people are so easily manipulated. <laughs> the, the, the agents of darkness will be promoting all these evil programs and then you'll be like, people will be so glued. You know, people, hey, <laughs> we like all these bad things, Marcella. It's not, it's, you know, a very wise man told me something. <laughs> Pastor John, he says to me, you know, sometimes we shouldn't blame false prophets. We should blame Christians that lack the knowledge and the word of God in them. We should blame ourselves for being led astray because we have the word, yet we will not listen to the word. So basically, that's it. I stopped watching TV because of, of, of programs I saw that behind it, there, there is a hand that is not uh, a hand that knows God. So I, I, I just cut myself off. I tell my kids, don't watch that. My, my daughter would watch this. I said, please don't watch that. I'm not talking about little babies. I'm talking about big people that they know and understand that I don't want your eyes there. You know, my baby, my girl went to idols, actually. She, she was called, and I was like, come out of there with immediate effect. You know, because she was at home in mid-rent then, and I was, I think I was, I traveled to Cape Town, and then she was like, Mama, uh, I, I've gone to idol. She sent me a picture of herself with that huge number. I said, come back, come back, come back, come back. Your gift will work for the glory of God and to edify the church. Not that everybody that goes to idol or something's wrong with idols. Nothing is wrong with idols and the gifts of people will work where God, but as for mine, I said, I know, come back. And she did exactly that because she understands. Uti, eh, my mother will stop us when it comes to this, my mother. And now my brother's like, no, she has to go back. I said, no, not mine. You see, it's as simple as that. Don't, you are, you are not being too hard on them. You are just teaching them. There are certain things. Yes, you go on idols. Then when, once you get inside industry, what happens? I have a brother, for heaven's sake, who was there, you know. I have a cousin who's there. <laughs> you know, if I can mention my surname, then you click, click, get them. So don't try to get me on this, a basis of a surname that you don't know. You don't know me. So I've seen my brother go there and come back. And he's like, when we look at him and the things he say, whew, I know. You see, so we need to be very careful, guys. Uh, TV is not bad, but me, now these are the things that I picked that made me stay away from TV, you see, especially the Mam Lambo uh, rain, I, I know. And then after Mam Lambo rain, a lot started coming out. If you just remember the years, so it doesn't work eh? for me. Mm -mm. It's not bad, but it doesn't work for me. Just like my sleeveless dress doesn't work for somebody else. You know, we are learning from one another. I'm telling you guys. So, Basically, that's it. That's why I stopped watching TV. I thank you so much, guys. I love you. God loves you more. May the Spirit of God be with you. May the grace and peace of God be with you. May you continue working on your salvation because that's what the Bible tells us. 
Oh, and give thanks to God for he is good. His mercies endure forever. He is a loving father and he will not change on us because he's God who is unchangeable. You know, he's the faithful father who starts something and brings it to accomplish. So as we enjoy the journey, remember that I love you. God loves you more.